Hey, what is up guys? Eric Thane here from Cinema Mastery and welcome to today's video. Today we're gonna to be talking about how to film powerful commercials using lighting. Let's do it. So this is probably one of the biggest questions that I get asked most often is like, what's the number one thing that I can do to make my cinematography look more cinematic, make it look better? Like, what's the number one thing that I can do? And the reality is that like, there's no number one thing. There's no like secret sauce or like magic thing that's going to change everything for you. Like cinematography is about learning a lot of skills and a lot of techniques and understanding a lot of different things. But if I had to boil it down to one thing, if I had to choose one thing that was like, this is the thing that is gonna make your cinematography look better, it would be lighting. I personally believe that lighting makes up like 80% of the cinematic look. So if you can really learn lighting and become good at lighting, then like everything else kind of falls in place. Like obviously there's more to it than that, but this is gonna take you a lot of the way there. So in this video, I wanna cover three tips for becoming a better storyteller using lighting so that you can film more powerful commercials uh, using your lighting. So tip number one is to motivate your lighting. Now, I feel like I talk about motivation a lot and uh, rightfully so, motivation is probably one of the most important skills you can learn as a cinematographer especially when it comes to lighting. Now, motivation applies to uh, every aspect of cinematography, but I feel like it's most prevalent in lighting. Motivation basically means being purposeful about your lighting. Uh, lighting a scene in such a way that it makes sense for the scene that you're shooting in, so that the lighting actually is serving your story and doing what you need it to do, so it looks natural, it looks like your actors, your talent are in a specific scene, so that it just looks right, basically. One of the biggest mistakes I see uh, amateur filmmakers making is that they just put up lights just for the sake of putting up lights. And this is something that I did certainly when I was starting out. As I remember like when I was first started shooting videos, I would just put up lights because I was told that you have to light your scenes, right? And so I would put lights up and I didn't have any clue like what direction they're supposed to come from or what the quality of light should be, like how soft or hard it should be or like the intensity of light or anything. I would just throw up lights because I was supposed to light my scene. Now, as you grow as a cinematographer and you start to learn, you wanna get better at understanding the motivation behind your lighting, the purpose behind your lighting. So when you go into a scene, rather than just throwing up lights just for the sake of throwing up lights, you wanna pay attention to the environment that you're shooting in. If you're shooting in an indoor space that would naturally have like overhead fluorescent tubes or something like that, then you might wanna use some uh, quasar tubes or some other type of lighting that's like a tube light up above your talent in order to replicate that look, to motivate the look of that type of light. If you're shooting a scene that's you know at night, maybe it's like a bedtime scene, um, maybe you want to bring some light coming through the window, some blue light coming through the window to motivate uh, moonlight and then turn on some lamps so that it's lit like a bedroom scene would be lit at night. So this is how I typically start my lighting process with any scene is I look at like, okay, what's the environment that I'm in? what would normally naturally be happening in this environment if I weren't here? And then I kind of start from there. Now, you, that's just kind of a starting point is you wanna start from there, but then what you wanna do is you wanna match that, but then use quality lights and good color accuracy and good lighting with like soft lighting on people's faces and like just make it look nice because natural lighting in a space Typically, if you walk in somewhere, it's not going to look good on camera. You'll have light kind of flooding all over the place. It'll be spilling everywhere. And so what you want to do is replicate what is already happening in the scene, but control it in such a way that you can really control the light and the shadows on your talent's faces and create a, an aesthetically pleasing image. Number two is to finesse the close-up. Okay, so this is basically a term that I use for how I approach lighting my scenes going from a wide shot into a close up shot. So typically when you start your lighting process, you are going to start with the wide shot because you wanna get everything kind of included in the scene. You wanna build the scene first. So you start with that wide shot, you set up your lights, you kinda of get everything set up and where it's gonna be. You're making sure that like, 
you know, on the wide shot, that's where the most of the scene is going to be visible. So you're going to make sure that all of your main, your key lights are outside the frame. You can't see them and you create a scene that just looks natural looking at the whole scene. Now, because you're wide, it's a little bit more difficult to really finesse things. And so a lot of times you just are kind of putting in the basic building blocks for your lighting for the wide shot. So you're like, hey, I'm going to have a key light over here. I'm going to have some negative fill over here. Um, we're going to have a backlight over here, and you're just kind of roughing it in. These are kind of your broad strokes to just get it right. And then when you go in for the close-up, that's where you start moving things and really finessing that light. Okay, Because when you're working with a wide shot, it's really hard to get the lights in the right place because you're working with a wider frame. And you can't necessarily get the lighting just right on your talent's face. It maybe isn't perfect, and you need to kind of like make some compromises, but then when you go in for the close-up, then you can really, really get it looking nice. So for example, when you're shooting outside, in a lot of cases, if you're shooting a wide shot outside, there's not really a lot of room for you to use a lot of materials to really shape the light. Unless you have like 50 foot duvetines or like 25 foot silks and uh, you know, kind of stuff that like Hollywood movies are using to, you know, these big cranes and all sorts of stuff in order to shape the light outside. It's usually pretty difficult. And so what a lot of cinematographers will do is that we'll basically just like for the wide shot, we'll just backlight with the sun, allow the sun to backlight the subject. Maybe the light on their face isn't perfect, but it's a wide shot, we're far away. It's okay, it's still gonna look nice. We're gonna have a good contrast between light and shadow by backlighting them. And then when we go in for the close-up, then you start bringing in your bounce and you start bouncing that sunlight to get it wrapping around the face just right. And then you bring in your negative fill to get the shadow levels just right, or maybe a bounce board to get the, the shadow and the fill levels just right. And so you really come in on the close-up and start finessing it and making it really look nice. But then on the wide shot, you don't have to worry about it so much. Tip number three is using shadow. When I talk about lighting and how to create amazing lighting, a lot of times lighting is a lot more about the shadow than it is about the light. Probably one of the biggest mistakes that uh, beginner filmmakers make is that they tend to over light things. Now, I did this for sure when I was starting out. Again, like I said earlier, like I would just throw up lights. I didn't really know what I was doing. And, uh, and I was told that you wanted to just fill in all the shadows and just make sure that everything was lit, right? So that you could see things really well. Well, when it comes down to it, like really good cinematography and artistic lighting is not just about everything being lit. In fact, it's more about having a good range of tonal values. So you want to have, you know, pockets of light, but then also places where there's plenty of shadow. And this is what creates a more cinematic look. Now, a lot of people look at my work and they say like, oh, your work is always dark and moody. And, uh, you know, you like to shoot stuff like that. And it's true. I like stuff that's a little bit more rich in the shadows, like quite a bit of shadow and dark and moody. But I don't want you to confuse that with like looking cinematic. It doesn't have to be dark and moody in order to be cinematic. Cinematic, a lot of times when it comes to lighting, has to do with having good shadows and good highlights, right? So you can have a high key scene, high key meaning a brighter scene, but it can still look cinematic. Let's say you're shooting a comedy or, or something that, you know, merits a high key like corporate type of look but as long as you bring in enough shadow and you start actually applying shadow using negative fill and cutting out some of that light so it's not just all lit you can still end up with a really good nice cinematic look so it's important to just always be thinking about not just how you're using the lighting but how that lighting is contrasting with the shadow. So like for example, when you're lighting somebody's face, we always talk about using reverse key lighting. That means you're always lighting them from the back side of their face. What that does is it allows the shadows to come forward. If you light from the front, then all the shadows are on the back side and you never see them. And so by having that contrast between light and shadow on the person's face, it gives it that three dimensionality uh, that makes it look really nice and really flattering and a lot more cinematic. Um, along with that is also, you know, how you light the background of the scene. So not just your talent, but when you're lighting the background, be looking for ways that you can create pockets of light using practicals or lamps or other lights in the background and light that environment so that you have kind of that effect where there's little pockets of light and little pockets of shadow. You don't want your lights just flooding the entire scene, just creating an entire, an entirely lit scene. You really want to make sure that you have little areas of light 
and little areas of shadow so that you get that contrast, that interest in the scene that will make it look more interesting and make it look more cinematic. So those are my top three tips for telling better stories using lighting. Now, obviously, lighting isn't just about those three things. There's a lot more that goes into it, and it can be somewhat complex, but also, if you learn it the right way, it really is pretty simple understanding the theory of lighting and how it all works. So if you're a cinematographer and you want to learn how to make your images look more cinematic and how to get better at lighting, I've got a Lighting Secrets Masterclass that I'll link to down below where I actually go in depth into exactly how I light my scenes. Believe it or not, there is a formula for this, for how to light things, how to adjust the quality and the angle and the intensity and the color of your lighting in order to make it look cinematic every single time. And every time I go into a scene, I follow the exact same formula. And by following that formula, I'm able to create an image that looks cinematic no matter what scene I'm shooting in, whether it's inside or outside, during the day or at night. It doesn't matter. If you just follow this formula, you'll be able to create really cinematic looking images using your lighting. So if you want to check that out, I'll put it down in the description below. Check out the Lighting Secrets Masterclass. If you have any questions about this or about lighting, feel free to comment down below and I will take a look at those and we will see you on the next video.